to go over this option question here because you get a lot of questions and options and I think that I have a good way of um, putting this one together piece by piece um, going through it one by one. So the question here is an investor owns 100 shares of ABC at 38. They sell one ABC February 40 call option at three. What is the investor's break even here? So take about a minute or so, walk through this question and I will help you all walk through this step by step and how do you actually go through this to make sure that you're catching all the different bits and pieces of this question. <clears throat> Cool, um, let's go through this question here. So the correct answer here is going to be 35. Awesome, and the shortcut here, the shortcut here is going to be, um, by the way, does anybody know what type of option strategy this is? So this is a, this is a special type of option strategy. It's considered a, um, a, a more sophisticated or an advanced, exactly, Abina. This is a, this is a covered call. This is a covered call because we own the underlying shares, but we also are selling a call option here in order to make a little bit of extra dough uh, on the side. So here's how I walk through this question here. And, and this is applicable to any type of hedge type of option strategy um, type of question. So the shortcut, the shortcut, the long story, right? So um, the too long did not read for this question is uh, going to be the price minus the rather I should say the cost minus the premium, which in this case is going to be 38 minus three. So therefore the break even, the break even is going to be 35. That's the shortcut here. That's how you should do on the exam. You should say, hey, this is a covered call. I'm going to take the cost, subtract the premium, get 35. The way that I like to conceptualize and think about these is by going step by step. So firstly, I ask myself, well, What's the first position? What's the first position that I, as an investor, have for this question? So the first position is I have 100 shares of ABC. And then I ask myself, did I buy those shares or did I sell those shares? Did I buy those shares or did I sell those shares? Well, in this instance, I bought those shares and I bought them at 38. Bought them at 38. My second position here is the call option that I wrote. And I wrote, a, I wrote an ABC February 40 call. Is it exercised? I asked myself, is it exercised or not? Well, this is a break even question, so don't care if it's exercised or not. Um, we don't even know what the stock is currently trading at. So it's not exercised, so irrelevant, irrelevant, not, uh, nothing happens. Irrelevant, nothing happens. <clears throat> Lastly, I like to look at the premium. So what is the premium that I paid or what is the premium that I get? So for the ABC February call, I basically made a $3 premium per share on that. Made a $3 premium per share on that. So. Didn't buy any call options, I wrote one, I get $3 of premium. So right now, as of this very moment, right now, what is my profit loss on this position? What is my profit loss on this position? So the profit loss here 
is going to be the sum of all of the different positions that I currently have. And that's going to be the 100 shares that I bought at 38 plus the call option. It was an exercise. Nothing happens there. I, not, I neither have to buy those options nor sell them to anybody. So that's a zero. And I get a premium of three. So my PL, my overall PL for this position is currently at three. I spent 38 bucks per share to buy ABC. I wrote a call option and so I collected $3 of premium per share. So right now my PL is minus 35. That's the overall kind of economic position that I'm currently in. Spend $38 per share to establish the position. And then I decided, hey, I'm gonna make a little bit of cash on the side. I'm gonna write a call option on my position. I'm going to get $3 of premium. So I'm sitting at a minus 35. In terms of how this relates to break even, it's kind of like asking, okay, well, if our profit loss is minus 35, in order for us to break even, what would we sell the shares at? What would we have to go in and sell our shares at in order to break even? So in other words, in other words, we can say we neither we neither gain nor lose money on this position. We neither gain or lose money on this position. Answer to that is going to be 35, right? The same as that shortcut we just did but we just literally proved it by going step by step. So if we go into the market and the shares are trading at 35 and we sell it at 35, we're, we, we break even, we're indifferent. Right? If this question was asking and saying, hey, you know, the stock is trading at 41, the stock is trading at 41, what would happen? What would happen if Let's take this a step further. So let's say, you know, the stock is currently trading at 41. What would happen? Let's breeze through these couple of positions that we just established here. So first position, 100 shares of ABC. Did we buy or sell? We bought them for 38. Nothing happens there, right? Nothing happens there. Second position, the ABC February 40 call. Is it going to be exercised or not? So if the stock is currently trading at 41, is this call going to be exercised or not? What do we think? And let's assume that we're close to maturity here. <clears throat> well, if the stock is trading at 41, we have a call, a call option. So actually in this instance, in this instance here, if the market price is 41 and we sold somebody a call option, so Think about the other side of the equation here. If we sell a call option, that means somebody on the other side has bought a call option. That means that somebody has bought a call option with the right to buy at 40. So if they have the right to buy at 40 and the market is trading at 41, do we think they're gonna exercise the call option here? All else being equal. Yeah, they are because the market's trading at 41 now they have the opportunity to buy it at 40. So we're gonna assume that this is going to get exercised. We're gonna assume that this is going to be exercised. And we have to deliver these February shares to the person who bought the call option because we wrote it, we wrote it, we have an obligation, right? So when you write a call option, you have an obligation to sell. Whereas if you buy a call option, you have the right to buy something. So as the seller of this call option, we are obliged to sell our shares of ABC to the buyer at the specified buying price. So this person will go and they will exercise this call option. Therefore, they're going to buy these call options or these shares, sorry, rather, they're gonna buy these shares from us for 40 bucks a pop. So they're going to buy it from us for $40. Premium, we've already collected that premium. So at the bottom here, premium is going to be unchanged. Therefore, our profit and loss in this scenario, if the stock is trading at 41 and our call option gets exercised, therefore our profit and loss is going to be what? It's going to be plus five. So we're up five. 
<clears throat> a couple of things here to note before I wrap this up. Was the stock price relevant in our calculation of our PL here? No, it wasn't, right? We don't, our stock price here was irrelevant, didn't affect us because we are forced in here, we're obligated to sell this stock at 40 to the buyer. So if you think about it the other way, it's like the buyer is buying the stock from you at 40. They have a right to buy at 40 and you are obligated to sell it to them at 40. So even though you bought this stock at 38, you wrote that call option, you're gonna go and turn around and sell it to the other person for 40 bucks. They're buying it from you for 40 bucks. You're pocketing the premium. You're pocketing the premium for allowing a person to buy a call, a call option from you. And the last point here is our profit and loss on a covered call is always going to be capped. It's always going to be the difference between the strike here, the strike here, and the strike minus what we bought it for and plus the premium that we collected. If we didn't have the call option, if we didn't write the call option, right? If we took away the call option and we just had shares and the stock price starts to shoot up, well, our game there is unlimited. There is no max gain for us, right? Hopefully that stock goes to the moon. But in this case, because we wrote that call option, we're capping off our profit and loss. So therefore, if you're writing covered call options, you just want to collect premium and you hope to God the call option doesn't get exercised so that you don't have to go and sell it off to somebody who wants to buy that call option. Cool. So that's a little bomb to leave uh, everybody off on. Um, options, I must say, they're not as testable on the exam. You may see four to five questions on options, and this is as tricky as they will get. So if you can walk through these different positions, first position, second position, premium, what's my profit and loss, what's the question asking of me, then you'll be good to go for the exam. You'll be more than prepared.